Hello everyone and welcome back to my F1 2021 Custom Formula 2 season for the 6th round of the championship at the Spa Circuit. The end of this round will mark the halfway point of the season so we need to get our act together and try and close down the points gap uh, to the championship leader Yuki Tsunoda who has been dominating so far this season. So let's get into it. It's Saturday and that means we're preparing for today's Formula 2 event here in Spa. As the cars are being prepared, let's join them trackside for the start of what promises to be a terrific race. So here we are again, a whopping 4.35 miles of track here at Spa, featuring long straights, some seriously fast corners and some massive elevation changes. This is a track that routinely delivers high quality racing and we'll be hoping to see just that from our young F2 drivers today. Davide Valsecchi joins me today. Davide, Spa is a favorite for fans and drivers alike. What tips would you have for these young drivers today? Always a pleasure to be here, Alex. Who doesn't love Spa? I wish I was down there racing today. I would say there's a lot of places to overtake on this circuit, so be patient on that first corner. Try and get through it safely, get a good exit and get in the right position to attack at the end of the main straight. So before the off, let's remind ourselves of yesterday's results with a look at the starting grid. An immense lap from Nobuharu Matsushita yesterday puts him on pole position. And it's Yuki Tsunoda in P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Armstrong, Eilot, Dejan Deruvula and Schumacher, Tictum, Lungard, Dragovic, Giuliano Alesi, Sato, Samaya, Jack Aitken and Joe, Galeo, Nisani, Piquet and Louis Delatraz, Mazepin, Marcolo, Giotto and Robert Schwartzman completes the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out. So let's go down to the track. Okay, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. So, as you may have seen on the uh, intro graphic there, uh, we are currently 50 points adrift of Yuki Tsunoda in the championship, and we start down in 15th today. Thankfully for us, Nobuharu Matsushita uh, was able to deny Tsunoda of pole position, and... Uh, that means uh, Matsushita gets the four points for pole uh, and not uh, Yuki Tsunoda. So that will really help us out uh, in uh, not losing ground despite our lowly qualifying position. So uh, we need to hope Matsushita can hold on to the lead. But now we need to focus on our own race as we go to the five red lights and away we go for the feature race here in Belgium. It's a great start versus Jack Aitken who went nowhere off the start and he's going to be losing places as we head down towards the first corner trying to gain some ground on the inside. We kind of get a bit blocked off there. We can't uh, fully uh, utilize uh, the run we had but uh, we will still gain some places nonetheless as we now try and slot in behind Giuliano Alesi and uh, we're going to give him some space here. We lift off into Eau Rouge and we're going to see if we can carry the speed uh, through Radion but the car feeling a little unstable there and we couldn't quite uh, carry the speed as well as I hoped and we are going to have to sit behind and as they fight uh, ahead of us we have to watch out for Guan Yu Zhou but I think thankfully we're going to be able to break late enough uh, to uh, not have to worry about him and now we can focus on Christian Lungard who is up ahead he's lost uh, that place to Giuliano Alesi and uh, now we need to try and uh, make the move on the Dane. We're actually going to go very deep into Ravage intentionally because Lungard's caught up in the dirty air uh, of Alesi and uh, we're able to sweep around the outside. We'll have the inside line for the next left-hander and Lungard has to give up this place as we now put the pressure on Alesi. Can we squeeze down the outside? He doesn't quite leave us the space there. So we go to the inside and we make the move the more traditional way. We're nowhere near the apex. But thankfully LAC saw us coming, gave us the space and uh, we were able to get through that without collision. We continue on again then and uh, we now put the pressure down the inside of Felipe Dragovic. But uh, unfortunately he's going to have the inside for this final corner. We can't carry the speed well enough through there and Felipe Dragovic holds on. Uh, for the time being, but we, we may still be close enough to go for a move down the inside into the first corner. We're going to go for it late on the brakes and we will go for the move down the inside and we will get ahead of Felipe Dragovic. Next up is Marino Sato uh, and then my teammates. So uh, we are making steady progress and we've already found our way up into ninth position. So I was hoping maybe we could get to reverse grid pole, but uh, at this point in the championship, we need to start aiming for 
more than eighth place in the feature race if we want to uh, fight our way back into title contention we need to uh, be uh, scoring podiums in and wins in the feature race because that's where the big points are and uh, if we want to haul back this 50 point deficit that we have to Yuki Sonoda uh, we have a lot of work to do so we need to make sure we are maximizing it uh, a win in this race is a long shot but we'll see what we can do we're going to go for the move down the inside of Marino Sato no we had to pull out of that one at the last moment that was a little ambitious going for it there into Fania uh, from that far back but uh, you can see we're faster uh, than Marino Sato who's uh, stuck in a bit of a train it seems uh, behind my teammate and a few others so hopefully that means uh, we can get a whole bunch of overtakes done in the near future we continue on and we're going to get the move done on Sato down the inside into the uh, lay com section and uh, we will continue to fight as we head through Malmody and we will just about get the move done there but Sato did not want to give that one up without a fight and fair play to him because he is kind of an uh, outsider in the title fight but you never know what can happen uh, he has been performing very very well this season in that Trident car so uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he uh, found its way into contention at some point uh, for more podiums and victories but uh, as we continue on we now catch up to our teammate we go down the inside very uh, late defensive little move there from Dan Tickton and uh, very aggressively uh, fighting we are teammates so uh, he uh, would want to be uh, ahead of me of course but uh, yeah that was a little bit he didn't really actually move to the right he more just stops moving to the left as you sort of naturally do there uh, along that straight but uh, yeah that really caught me off guard I assumed he was just going to take the racing line but you can see he just left a little bit of space on the outside there uh, just over a car's width probably and uh, just to cover off the inside a bit and we had to react to that and uh, that uh, delayed our uh, braking there and uh, unfortunately that uh, met us both run wide made a bit of contact but no damage done and now we continue the fight through the field as we go around the outside and that was a nice little move there on Mick Schumacher and we're through against the German and now we can catch the Indian Jane Derubler, the teammate of our title rival who uh, he's not had great form this season unfortunately Jane Derubler but uh, we have uh, been uh, not we haven't particularly been great ourselves and uh, Dan Tickton uh, our teammate uh, also probably not quite scoring as many points as I would have hoped and uh, we're not really taking it to Carlin in a title fight at the moment uh, as I hoped we would be but uh, yeah it's really uh, just been the Sonoda show uh, so far this uh, this season but uh, anyway we continue on and now we'll see if we can make a move on at Jay and Arubula as we head towards a launch in one that's going to be a very uh, limited passing opportunity to we're going to have to lift and uh, give him a little bit of breathing room behind as we now head towards the uh, last few corners and we can't quite get up the inside there trying to look up the outside but there's no way you can really get all the way around there uh, unless you have a substantial grip advantage I'm talking maybe a Formula 1 car versus a Formula 3 car but uh, yeah that uh, was never going to work for us now we finally go for the move down the inside into the first corner a little bit deep but Darubla leaves us the room and we get through on the Indian driver and uh, now we are up into fifth position. Four cars left in front of us. Marcus Armstrong, Callum Eilat are the two ahead. And uh, the two Japanese drivers, uh, Yuki Tsunoda and Nobuharu Matsushita, uh, are on the top two steps of the podium at the moment. Not sure which order uh, at this time, but Derubla trying to come back at us now. Down the inside into Lecom. And we switch back and just make a bit of contact with the rear end of Derubla's Carlin. And that has damaged our front wing. We're going to keep fighting for this position because I don't know how bad the damage is. You can see the understeer there running a little bit wider than I would have liked to and uh, here it is on replay just clipped the right rear uh, tire there of Darubla's car and uh, that as uh, yeah you can see how much understeer we got through Ravage uh, corner that uh, is already uh, very understeery and uh, now through no name you can see uh, struggling there as well we just about managed to hold off Darubla somehow and uh, we probably can push on for a few more laps we're on lap 5 the pit window I think opens uh, on lap 6 so uh, if we can hold out to lap 6 uh, I think that will be the plan we'll see what we do here if we decide to box or not we don't and uh, we push on 
and our pace actually isn't that bad once I sort of learn to uh, drive around the issue uh, the uh, we're definitely slow but uh, not terribly so so uh, yeah that is uh, it wasn't too difficult to just to do one extra lap I wouldn't have wanted to do much more than that but uh, it's time to enter the pit lane unfortunately the audio issues return once again and uh, we now have to get that front wing changed it's going to make our pit stop very very long but we will get a monumental undercut on the rest of the field so uh, hopefully that will help us gain some of that time back we were fighting remember with Darubala and Sato keep that in mind uh, when we re uh, re-enter the circuit or when they re-enter the circuit after their pit stops but uh, we get out of pit lane and uh, we are told in a very uh, broken radio message to uh, make one more stop towards the end of this race we're not going to do that uh, that is just the uh, preset strategy that we were given but uh, yeah we're not going to make that stop we're going to run to the end now it's a risk uh, running at the same set of tyres uh, from the pit window to the end of the race but uh, a new fastest lap of the race. With fastest laps of the race now, uh, we will gain track position once again. So, who are we going to be fighting with? And that is Dane Derubala, right there ahead of us. He has just, just come out in front of us. But that means, with the fastest laps that we've been setting in the uh, intervening time, uh, we have gained uh, all of the time lost by changing the front wing. And now, if we can make the move on Derubala, we will reclaim the track position uh, that we had previously so here we go are uh, we going to get Rubler down in Sulecom and we will get there late on the brakes and Rubler couldn't fight back now around the outside though with a switch back we were a little bit deep there we had to come from a long way back to make that move and uh, with the car all off balance and all wrong there we weren't able to uh, quite uh, make that work now we try and sneak up the inside of Rivar just Rubler still struggling on cold tires and that was a sweet little move there and we were able to get ahead of Rubler in the end but uh, yeah, that was a bit of clumsy driving from, from by me uh, at Lake Com to uh, not uh, be able to make the move stick there. But uh, nonetheless, uh, we continue to push forwards, and you can see we are uh, currently keeping pace with uh, Callum Eilert up ahead. But uh, now out of pit lane, no one around us uh, coming out, so uh, we've jumped uh, a whole bunch of cars there, uh, including Dan Tictum, who we overtook earlier in this race. So now we are effectively where we were uh, before. Uh, the front wing damage uh, happened uh, before we were able to try to re-overtake us and we tried to switch to the inside just a little bit too late but uh, yeah that is uh, damage at limitation there but uh, now we go for the move down the inside of Callum Eilert that was a late move there but we were able to make it stick and uh, we were able to pull the car up and uh, stop it effectively on the apex that time and uh, Eilert was not able to make a switch back so uh, that is what we needed to do on Darubala, but uh, nonetheless, we continue to push forwards in this race. Now we're going for the move around the outside of Marcus Armstrong into the last corner, the uh, last two corners, and we're going to try and get through here. Armstrong with a better exit, though, as we are really pinched tight on the inside, and it's very difficult to get the traction down there, but we might be close enough to go for a move into turn one later. No, not late enough on the brakes, and uh, we're going to have to wait until they come to make the move and uh, get ahead of Marcus Armstrong. So here we go with the DRS. It's going to be a pretty easy one in a straight line. And we get ahead of Marcus Armstrong uh, along the Kemmel Strait. And uh, that brings us up into the podium places. Next up is Matsushita, who's unfortunately lost the lead uh, to Yuki Tsunoda. Probably inevitable. Uh, really, Tsunoda has been so dominant this season. Uh, the fact that Matsushita uh, was able to take pole position uh, was uh, a miracle in itself. Uh, no disrespect, of course, to Matsushita. Uh, but Yuki Tsunoda has been unbelievable this season. We catch up to uh, the first of the Japanese drivers. I should say the second. I'm almost forgetting about Marino Sato behind us. But uh, yes, we catch up to Nobuharu Matsushita. DRS open for us now as we head along the start straight. And now we will make the move down the inside into the first corner and uh, make that one work as we go a little bit deep. Matsushita might get a switch back here actually if he you know, can't quite get the power down on the exit as uh, we were on his outside but uh, anyway that is Robert Schwartzman uh, retiring from the race with a mechanical failure not really uh, going to affect our race no safety car uh, because of that and uh, now we can uh, shift our focus back on Yuki Tsunoda who we have caught as we are on much older tyres but we still have good pace and uh, we have caught up to Yuki Tsunoda so we have a chance now to win this race 
if we can make the move on Yuki Sonoda. So here we go then as we head through Eau Rouge Radion now onto the Camel Straight. DRS open. We're going to make a pretty easy move here in the straight line, I think. As we sit in the slipstream, you can't defend from a car that's just simply faster. And we go for the move around the outside and get ahead of Yuki Sonoda as uh, he was a sitting duck there in a straight line. But uh, unfortunately, that doesn't make us the leader. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure Sonoda will get the DRS soon enough as we have a little uh, wag of the tail on the exit of Malmody. But uh, we managed to hold on. And uh, now we need to push away uh, before we get to a DRS zone. Thankfully, uh, there's no DRS zones for many, many kilometers. And uh, we're able to open the gap uh, before, the the so uh, before we get to a DRS zone. Fastest lap of the race for us there. And uh, we are now taking a look at Marcus Armstrong, who retires with a mechanical failure. Unfortunate for the Kiwi driver. And he is out of the race as he pulls off to the side. Now, as we continue forth, and uh, we are down to just 20 runners in this race, run the final lap, and uh, that is uh, all she wrote for this one. As we round, round up the final few corners, power down for the final time, and we're going to cross the line to win the feature race in Belgium. Great drive. We did it. Good job. With the fastest lap as well, that was some much, much needed points for our championship. Brilliant stuff from Dams today. What a superb victory. And Davide Valsecchi, give me your thoughts. How did they accomplish this result? What a race, Alex. Every so often we get a spectacle like we did today. Less focus on strategy and time management and more on just pushing it to the limits and battling it out for those top positions. I think what we experienced today is evidence of why Formula 2 is continuing to draw into crowds. And expect today's race will definitely be turning a few more heads to the series. Dams, another team with a huge amount of history based right in the heart of motorsport near Le Mans in France, have once again shown their formidable abilities out on the track with yet another win today. So we win the feature race here in Belgium. Yuki Tsunoda finishes up in second position with Nobuharu Matsushita in third. That's some nice symmetrical flags on the podium. Now then, Davide Valsecchi, who would you say was your driver of the day? I think it's got to be Jean Galeol. It's not always spectacular, but he quietly gets the job done, and that's the case today. After all this drama, you'd be mad not to join us for the next race. We hope to see you then. Take care. So, now we sit 41 points behind Sonoda in the championship. We have closed that gap, uh, which is awesome news for us as uh, we take a look at the highlights of this one it uh it all went right on the start we gained a few places there probably could have gained a few more but i think we were a bit blocked off there on the inside line i think that was marino sato there uh who was uh, running three wide with a couple of others and uh that uh hindered us from gaining any more places there uh, i didn't want to be too aggressive uh because we'd end up with uh, a broken front wing on lap one which is never a fun experience especially when you can't change uh, the front wing that early in the race or you can change the front wing that early in the race but it won't count as a compulsory pit stop uh, until lap six so yeah that was unfortunate that uh, we did damage that front wing just before uh, that window opened but uh, or it's unfortunate that we damaged the wing at all uh, that was on lap five uh, that that happened but uh, we managed to recover from it and uh, we came away with the ultimate prize in this one uh, which was of course coming away with the win the fastest lap as well just missing out on pole position but nonetheless still uh, a great day in the office and uh, pitting that early uh, certainly actually, uh, it certainly helped us gain some uh, track position uh, in the end uh, and uh, it was yeah definitely the right call to uh, come in as early as possible get that new front wing of the car because the tyre wear uh, even in the F1 cars and the both well, both in the F1 cars and the, and the F2 cars it's not that bad around this circuit. I'm pretty sure in Formula 1 it's an easy one stop. So uh, it's not really a surprise that we still had pace despite having much older tyres. And you can see some damage to the front nose uh, cone there as well. But uh, yeah, it 
uh, yeah, was, uh, there was no tire concerns at all, even right at the end. So, uh, yeah, it's no surprise that we still had some good pace and uh, we were able to come away uh, with the victory uh, despite running much longer on our tires. Uh, they just weren't really wearing, so uh, that was uh, very beneficial to us. Uh, in the end and uh, perhaps uh, perhaps the undercut is just uh, the way to go here and maybe uh, a useful strategy uh, in the future around this circuit if it's going to be uh, that powerful so uh, we'll have to uh, keep that one in mind and uh, maybe that can serve us well uh, in the future but uh, yeah as for Sonoda he finished in second uh, so he maximized what he could have done in this race and uh, limited the damage as well. Welcome back for the final event of the weekend, the sprint race. Here, the top eight from yesterday's feature race are reversed to make up the grid below us. And in just a few minutes, those drivers will be hurtling down into turn one. Someone who no doubt has had their fair share of experience in the rain is the 2012 GP2 champion, Davide Valsecchi. Davide, how do you deal with the rain out on the track? Well, Alex, when race involved, it's important to keep your cool. All it takes is a tiny bit of contact with a wet curb and you lose control. If you're panic, it's all over. We're certainly in for some excitement today, that's for sure. So here we are on the grid then for the sprint race in Belgium and that is not what we like to see. Heavy rain at the start of the race moving to extreme rain uh, in about 10 minutes or so uh, to around the 15 minute mark uh, and then going back to heavy rain eventually going to light rain and stopping but that's potentially after the end of the race uh, judging by how long that weather scale is so uh, that's going to be interesting but we'll see how it goes as we go to the five red lights. And away we go for a soggy sprint race at Spa and it's a good start for us as we get a nice launch uh, off the grid and we're going to try and make some places around the outside into the first corner trying to stay out of trouble here more than anything else and uh, we're able to find a nice little window of clean air to stick our nose into and we've made our way up into sixth position already as we try and fight side by side uh, with the framer of Mick Schumacher around the outside of Rouge and Radion and we will just about make the move stick not only on Schumacher but we'll also grab Kalamila as well and now we try and put the pressure on Jane DeRuvela as uh, he sits further up the road but uh, it looks like he's a bit too far ahead for us. Meanwhile Yuki Sonoda has also made a good start as we close up uh, to DeRuvela in the braking zone. Sonoda has followed us all the way through. He's now fighting with Kalawila and I think he might actually get that move done and he is up into fifth position so Sonoda's gained two places. We've gained four uh, effectively, Sonoda's actually overtaken three cars as uh, we now make the same move we did on Christian Lungard. We do it on Deruvula now and we get ahead of the Indian driver in exactly the same way we did to Lungard uh, on lap one of uh, the feature race. So uh, certainly uh, the outside line working well for us there at Rivage and we're able to uh, use the clean air there and uh, the slightly better visibility not sitting right in behind other cars and uh, we're able to get through there and now we are piling the pressure on Marino Sato who is sitting in second position but a loser at the back end there and we lost a lot of speed uh, from that and Deruvula gets straight back past us and we need to be careful we don't lose a spot to Yuki Sonoda as uh, we have to cover the inside line there Sonoda backs out as he had a little look around the outside now we need to refocus and uh, try and re-overtake Deruvula and uh, we've had a few battles with Deruvula to this, this uh, weekend and uh, we've uh, spent a bit of time staring at his rear wing, a bit of time running into his rear tyre as well. So let's hope we don't do that this time as he defends into Ravage. So that gives us the opportunity as he has to slow right up on the apex to make the corner. We're going to sail around the outside and uh, we will make that move stick on Jay and Deruvula. And uh, we will move our way up uh, back into third position and uh, now refocus our attention on Marino Sato. Uh, at the moment, my teammate Dan Tictum is leading, so that's great news for the team's championship. If we can get a 1-2 here, that will be huge uh, for the team points, but uh, we need to uh, clear up Marino Sato first. We're trying to go around the outside through Fania, and we might actually make it work here, as we'll have the inside line for the next corner, and we get through on Marino Sato. 
and uh, me finally get our way up into second position. Next up is Dan Tictum. Uh, of course, I would like to reverse that one too and put ourselves into the lead because we need, uh, while Sonoda is down the order a little bit in this race, uh, currently behind his teammate. Uh, 1.6 seconds, 1 .6 seconds to uh, Dan Tictum. But uh, yeah, while Sonoda's down the order a little bit in fifth place, uh, we have an opportunity to gain some big points in this one. So uh, that is our target. So uh, if we can pass Dan Tictum, uh, that is not what I want to see though, because Dan Tictum's going slowly Yellow and he flag. might be out of this race if he cannot get his car refired because he is currently coming to a grinding halt and Dan Tictum is out of the sprint race here and that's going to bring out the virtual safety car as well as uh, we continue through this lap uh, and uh, yeah Dan Tictum is out of the race unfortunately for our teammate and uh, he will take no further part in this weekend and uh, score no points for our team title hopes so uh, there goes that idea of a 1-2 Delta until the green flags. It's uh, still a net gain for us though as we get back underway for green flag racing. Uh, we gain a few points from that as does Sonoda but not as many as we would. Uh, gaining three points by taking the lead there. Sonoda gaining two uh, going from fifth to fourth I believe. So uh, yeah uh, I guess a net gain for our championship but uh, it is a little uh, compensation for having ticked him out of the race and uh, losing uh, around 12 points in the team's championship fight. Should be more grip, but don't expect a dry track. Okay, so rain lightning up soon, that's what we like to hear, but not what we like is spinning at Fania, and that is exactly what's happened there as we try and desperately get out of the gravel trap and keep it off the wall. We have managed that as we were keeping the accelerator floored as uh, we were reversing it towards the wall. We've managed to hold on to the lead, but a lot of understeer there uh, through Stavolo, and that's allowed Marino Sato through. Now we're side by side with Jay and Aruvula as we continue this fight that we've been having all weekend, and Aruvula's just got the nose ahead of the moment and he's going to fully be ahead of us by the time we get to Blanchimon and we're going to back out and not let him uh, take uh, that position as we just want to make sure we stay ahead of Sonoda at this point as we're trying to look around can we re-overtake Daruvula into the bus stop we're certainly close enough we're going to go down the inside of the Indian driver late on the brakes there and we push him a little bit wide but we make the move on Jay and Daruvula and uh, that may actually give an opportunity to Yuki Sonoda who's now around the outside of his teammate the two Carlins going side by side down towards the first corner but I think Daruvula may just be able to maintain that position this time but uh, those two are uh, teammates and they are fighting away at the moment but Daruvula was able to maintain that position which is good news for us and uh, that means there is an extra car between myself and Yuki Sonoda now though we need to get past Marino Sato, who is back into the lead of this one as we run wide on the exit of Radion. And that's going to give Daruvula an opportunity as we're slow off that corner. He's gaining and gaining in the slipstream, following us right across to the right-hand side of the road. But I think we'll just have enough in a straight line to maintain the position uh, ahead of Jane Daruvula. And uh, we will do just that and uh, refocus our attention to Marino Sato once again. So as we continue on, we do uh, catch up to the leader. And as we try and have a look to the outside, we're not be able to <laughs> make a move there through Puon. So we just have to sit right behind him. And now into Fania, we might have an opportunity here. Down the inside we go and we'll get the move done on Marino Sato much easier this time uh, than what we did the first time trying to go around the outside there. It's uh, a much more difficult challenge, but uh, the inside line uh, at that point of the circuit, a very good way to go. And uh, we get ahead of Marino Sato. Back into the lead of this race and back in control of uh, the top points of scoring position. So now we just need to push on and maintain this position to the rest of the race. Uh, speaking of the weather, it uh, seems like the worst of the rain uh, must have missed the circuit. There was certainly no uh, extreme rain. Normally that will bring out, would bring out the safety car. Uh, if that happens so obviously uh, we did not get those conditions uh, at any point during this race so uh, as we continue on I actually turned off ABS seeing as I had pretty good pace in this one so uh, it's been something I've been trying to do for a while just for the practice and uh, I will turn it off permanently at some point but uh, as we continue on a bit of wheel spin on the exit we get up on the curb and that's a spin for us and uh, that's got nothing to do with ABS that was just a lack of concentration on the exit getting a bit of wheel spin sent us to the left over the curb and uh, now we actually may drop a spot to Marino Sato we had a huge lead but we've just dumped all of that time and then some 
and uh, now we sit behind the Japanese driver once again as we head up over Rouge very cautiously as uh, we do not want to make a mistake there or well, that could end in a barrier we were very very lucky to get away with that spin just now uh, on that section of the circuit uh, lucky we had a big gap to the next car or we could have recreated Spa 1998 but uh, thankfully that didn't happen we continue on and uh, trying to break on the curb there uh, was never going to go well and uh, we send ourselves sailing off to the outside and uh, we lose a bit of time again to Marino Sato. We continue on then uh, to what is the final lap of the race. And you can see I'm trying my best to catch up to Sato, but he's just a little bit too far ahead. And we have a look to the inside late in the piece, but we just can't get alongside. Marino Sato is going to hold on, and he's going to take the win here as he comes across the line to win the spring race in Belgium as we just about avoid the wall and take home second position. That was a close okay, one on the end and bring it home. Uh, of that wall there. That could have ended our race, but luckily we only made very light contact as we uh, lost the rears there as well. Marcus Armstrong is the driver of the day here, and uh, we again beat Yuki Tsunoda. So another fantastic victory for Trident today. And I have to wonder, Davide Valsecchi, just what set them apart from the competition here? What can I say? The condition like this, it's an incredible difficult drive. But they pulled off something truly special today. They had the grip when they needed. Every time they were able to find just the right line. And they had the confidence to put those things together and just push and push. That's what earned them this victory today. It's the part we've all been waiting for, the podium finish, and it's probably one of the more unexpected finishes in a while. Trident take the victory, and Trident have made huge strides within F2 recently, and today proves that they're not only still in the race, but they're in it to win. Congratulations to everyone on the team. So, Marino Sato wins in Belgium. We finish up in second position with Jane Deruvela in third. So, driver of the day then, Davide Valsecchi, who do you think you'd go for? Let's give it to Marcus Armstrong. That was a quality drive from start to finish. He can be proud of that one. And after all that excitement, I think it's time for a lie down. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you when Formula 2 returns. So, Sonoda's championship lead down to 35 points as he only managed fourth position, not able to ever clear his teammate in this one. And... Uh, to be fair, it uh, was a very difficult race uh, in these conditions to follow while the cars, the visibility was pretty horrible. So uh, we were lucky that we managed to clear uh, a few of the uh, a few of the cars uh, in the opening stages uh, with that move around the outside of Eau Rouge uh, being uh, Eau Rouge and Radion, uh being uh, one of the uh, main reasons we gained a spot or two there. But uh, here we go, actually, uh, right on cue. But uh, yeah, that uh, certainly helped us out uh, in uh, clearing uh, some of the traffic early as well as picking the outside line into the first corner. That uh, was definitely the right choice as well as we were able to gain two spots there. And uh, that really set up our race. I think that put us up into fourth position with those two moves. Uh, and Sonoda gained a few places there as well uh, in those opening phases. But that's where he kind of stalled out and stopped. Uh, whereas we continue to fight forwards throughout the rest of the race. Had a few spins unfortunately but uh, the pace was very very good this round actually even in the rain uh, we were able to remain uh, a solid competitor and uh, except for then <laughs> but uh, yeah it uh, was very interesting driving in the rain with no ABS I have to say uh, I didn't ever turn it back on uh, towards the end of the race I thought I'd just push through and uh, try and improve uh, as a driver with no ABS definitely negatively affected my pace I would say not by much but uh, uh, I mean as you saw I said the fastest lap without ABS but it's the consistency uh, I can set you know maybe one good lap once in a while but uh, I can't consistently drive well uh, with ABS turned off so it's gonna stay on for a bit longer uh, uh, in general unless I am having another one of these races where I am just uh, a little bit too fast it's uh, a nice way to uh, balance things out a bit and uh, give uh, the other drivers uh, a, uh, some hope <laughs> because uh, obviously you know it, I don't set the perfect difficulty level every time sometimes it's a little easier than I intended to be sometimes it, it's a little bit harder so uh, I can uh, use the assists to uh, 
balance things out a little bit mid-race. But other than that, then there's not a lot left to cover, so thank you so much for watching. Feel free to give us some feedback in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.